now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 8.06. It's O'Connor and Company here on this Monday morning. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our routine and letting us be a part of your routine. Coming up in 30 minutes, Down Gardner Heritage Foundation on that story we just discussed, the uh, the victories of conservative parties across Europe over the weekend. Undeniable, like just every country it looked like. We'll get into that. It's Larry O'Connor with Julie Gunlock. Morning, Julie. Good morning. You're a Virginian. That means one week from tomorrow you will be casting your vote in the primary and determining who will be the nominee to run against Tim Kaine in this general election. And the way the polls are tightening right now in the presidential race, one poll last week showed Biden and Trump tied head-to-head in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Glenn Youngkin has said Virginia's in play. That's going to affect this Senate race in a big way. Joining us right now is one of the Republicans who would like that nomination. He is Scott Parkinson. Thanks for joining us, sir. Well, it's great to be back on, Larry. Hi, Julie. How are you? Doing great. So you're a vice president of government affairs for Club for Growth, chief of staff for Representative Ron DeSantis before he headed down to Florida. And also you were the executive director of the Republican Study Committee. So you have spent your life in Republican politics. Uh, make the case for the Republican nomination here and why you're the best person to go up against Tim Kaine. Yeah, well, first of all, Tim Kaine has been in office for 30 years. I've got the experience. I also worked for three U.S. senators. I understand the precedent, procedure, rules, and personalities to really be effective on day one. And the United States Senate, we don't need somebody that has on-the-job training. We need somebody that can get in there and fight back for our freedoms. We know that there's going to be a major debt limit negotiation right at the beginning of 2025 when the so-called Fiscally Responsibility Act expires. Uh, we know that there's going to be a important executive branch and judicial nominations to confirm for President Trump. I've got that experience working at the highest levels of government, and I'm ready to take Tim Kaine on to adjudicate his radical record. You know, some people just playing devil's advocate here. You know, you, I was a longtime staffer up on Capitol Hill and then have worked in sort of nonprofits around D.C. similar to you. And some people would say that's disqualifying. We want people who have not been in this D.C. scene, you know, and you've got some significant uh, competition here with Hung Kao and Eddie Garcia and many others. Why does your D.C. experience why, as, as, you know, people would say you're a creature of D.C.? Why why do you think that that you mentioned, you know, you know how the system works, but do you think that electors want someone who who's sort of outside of the D.C. sort of workings of the D.C. scene? Well, listen, I do think that the experience matters to Virginians. Uh, My experience has been fighting back against the Uniparty on behalf of the conservative movement. That's why people like Ted Cruz and Mike Lee have endorsed my campaign. I haven't been corrupted by the system. Last summer, I came out against the reelection of Mitch McConnell to serve as the Republican leader, and that put a big target on my back. Yeah. But I think that it's time for new conservative leaders to step up and try to make a difference. We saw how the political oligarchy and the uniparty came together to really infringe upon our constitutional God-given rights during COVID, and I think that it's time for a new generation to step up and make a difference. I've got almost 19 years experience in public policy. And I think that it's important to make sure that people understand what these big issues are, whether it's the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, working with President Trump in 2017 to get that done when I was at the RSC, or if it's working on deregulation or, you know, other economic policies like spending uh, to end inflation. Right now in Virginia, Average households pay over $12,230 more in higher costs underneath these Biden-Kane policies. Mm. And I'm not an average household, right? I'm a family of six. So $25,000 a year for families like Mm. mine, that's four years of Joe Biden, $100,000. People can't afford it. We need to fight back against Washington and big government. Scott Parkinson is our guest. His website is scottparkinson.com if you want to support his candidacy or get more information about it. I think one of the most important, and by the way, I just want to say anybody who's running against Tim Kaine will be 
an outsider and a anti-establishment figure because he he is the personification of DC establishment and everything wrong with the swamp. Uh, Scott, I, I think one of the most important qualifications for the person who emerges as the nominee next week is the ability to combat what Tim Kaine's going to throw at you. You need to be able to not get caught flat-footed or on your heels when he says that you're going to force women into back alleys with coat hangers and that you're a mega extremist insurrectionist. So go ahead, address that, because that's what if you get the nomination, that's what your next six months is going to be. Yeah, listen, I think Tim Kaine is the extremist in that issue. He holds the same position as our former governor, Ralph Northam, which is no abortion restrictions. You guys remember in the 2023 elections, the Democrats said that they weren't going to go any farther in Virginia on abortion policy. But the first bill that they filed was HB3, which allowed for abortion all the way up to birth. And, you know, you have people like Tim Kaine that want to codify Roe. The Dobbs decision returned Roe to the states. I think that Virginia, New York, Oklahoma, Alabama, California are all going to have different laws. And if that's something that you want to change, you should run for state senate or delegate or governor to effectuate a change in your commonwealth. But the bottom line is, I'm not going to be a vote to allow for continued funding of uh, Planned Parenthood and abortion travel at the Pentagon. This is a state issue, and the federal government should keep out of it. Well, what about the insurrection? Where, where were you on January 6th, Scott Parkinson? <laughs> <laughs> I was in Arlington, Virginia, in my house, and I was watching on television. <laughs> was not at the Capitol that day, but obviously, you know, the, the rhetoric of the radical left, to call it an insurrection, you know, obviously— there was violence that happened there, but I think that we still don't know answers on exactly how many FBI agents infiltrated the crowd, and it honestly created this riot mob mentality. The analogy that I often use is if you see those fights that sometimes happen at a high school, and somebody sucker punches one kid, the kid's on the ground, and 10 people run by him and kick him in the head. I don't think that 10 people expected to get in a fight that morning, but sometimes the emotions of a situation overtake uh, a sense of reality and these terrible things happen so what we need to make sure is that we number one back our law enforcement community we have a public uh, uh, safety crisis with our southern border the illegal alien invasion we need to make sure that this dangerous rhetoric of defunding the police is confronted you know the democrats said that i want to defund the police because i said that we shouldn't be funding sanctuary cities that weren't honor, honoring ICE detainers like Fairfax County. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they honestly, they're willing to lie about me and all these other candidates across America that want to stand for the rule of law and make sure that American citizens are protected. Yeah, you know, I, I also, I think a lot of voters are, it's particularly in Virginia, are concerned about the increased crime we're seeing in D.C. and some of these protests. Um, we saw them this weekend where they defaced these uh, some of our most beautiful um, memorials in D.C. You know, would you be interested in calling for more oversight of the district government? Um, you, we have some, Tim Kaine, for instance, he wants statehood. We have some members um, in the Virginia delegation that want statehood v. D.C. What's your position on that? And secondly, would you want more oversight of Congress, congressional oversight over the district? Because it really is getting out of hand. Yeah, listen, I think that's a constitutional question. And, of course, uh, the District of Columbia is not a state. They should not have statehood either. Yep. I think that um, we need to make sure that home rule, you know, the, the enforcement of the Constitution as it pertains to the District of Columbia remains like it is. But you do need to have Congress stepping in and defunding these actions that are unsafe that are happening by the D.C. mayor. Mm. And that's where accountability comes in. We can obviously use the power of the purse to effectuate change in the District of Columbia and make it a, you know, really a shining city on the hill once again. And, you know, that'll be something that I'd try to do through the appropriations process. Great. Scott Parkinson. Go to scottparkinson.com for more information. Uh, the primary is a week from tomorrow, and then we get right down to it. We'll have our Republican nominee squaring off against Tim Kaine. And as I said, the latest polls showing Biden and Trump neck and neck in Virginia, Governor Yunkin committing to keeping Virginia in play, this Senate seat should be up for grabs as well, and it's going to be a hell of a campaign. Scott Parkinson, good luck. 
and get out there and keep knocking on doors. All right. Thank you. Real Clear Politics has that as a toss-up. We can win. There you go.